Greetings, I am Mike Grontman. This video clip illustrates the effects of solar radiation pressure on orbiting spacecraft. More video clips illustrating other effects of interest to space mission design and to spacecraft design can be found at the website astronauticsnow.com. The simulations are performed using AGI's SDK. Solar radiation pressure, or pressure of the solar light, causes changes in satellite orbits. The effect is proportional to the spacecraft's effective area and inversely proportional to its mass. Therefore, radiation pressure is especially important for small spacecraft and orbiting debris, as well as for space objects with large area-to-mass ratios, such as detached and free-floating sheets of multi-layer insulation. To illustrate the effect of solar radiation pressure, we consider here natural satellites orbiting the Earth, a highly rarefied upper atmosphere at altitudes above 1,000 km is known as the exosphere. Some exospheric hydrogen atoms undergo collisions that place them into satellite orbits of our planet. The Sun is a bright source of radiation at the resonance wavelengths that is efficiently scattered by hydrogen atoms. These Lyman alpha photons have their wavelengths 121.6 nanometers. Scattering of solar photons has a net effect of force acting in the anti-solar direction. In fact, this radiation pressure force approximately equals in magnitude the force of the solar gravitational attraction acting on hydrogen atoms. As a result, hydrogen atoms orbiting the Earth experience significant radiation force. This example would allow us to illustrate the effect of radiation pressure in a matter of days, rather than in months and years as is common for orbiting spacecraft. Consider now a satellite hydrogen atom orbiting the Earth in the initial circular orbit shown in white with the radius 4 Earth radii and 90 degree inclination. The orbit period is slightly larger than 11 hours. The orbital plane is in the plane of the Earth-Sun line. In other words, the atom orbital plane is oriented edgewise towards the incident solar radiation. The yellow vector points to the Sun on the left illuminating the Earth. The yellow band on the surface is the equator. The orbit of the hydrogen atom is shown in red. It is quickly becoming elliptical. When the satellite is over the North Pole, the solar radiation pressure force slows it down with the respective lowering of perigee, which is above the South Pole. When the satellite is over perigee in the Southern Hemisphere, the solar radiation pressure force acts to accelerate the spacecraft and to raise its apogee above the North Pole. One can see that solar radiation pressure increases orbit eccentricity, raises apogee, and lowers perigee. The net effect is in an important way opposite to the atmospheric drag acting on satellites, the latter circularizing orbits, that is decreasing eccentricity, by lowering apogee faster than perigee. Note that this video is for rocket scientists and space engineers only, Watching orbit evolution is as exciting for unenlightened folks as observing paint drying. As a result of solar radiation pressure, the orbit becomes more and more elliptical, with perigee approaching the surface of the Earth. Four days later, as you see in this example, our satellite, an exospheric hydrogen atom, crashes into the Earth. Now let us consider what happens if the initial orbital plane of a hydrogen atom is normal to the incident solar radiation. Here again the yellow vector points to the Sun on the left illuminating the Earth. The yellow band on the surface is the equator. We begin with the initial orbit, shown in white, with radius of apogee and radius of perigee 5.5 and 2.5 Earth radii respectively. The orbital period is about 11.3 hours, and inclination is 90 degrees. The current orbit of the moving hydrogen atom is shown in red. The hydrogen atom now spends more time moving slowly at apogee over the North Pole than at perigee over the South Pole. The net effect of solar radiation pressure would produce torque 
acting on the orbit and the orbit, consequently, would precess, that is, change its orientation. As the orbital plane turns, the atom would have velocity components in the direction Sun-Earth. The atom would thus accelerate and decelerate under the force of radiation pressure. In our example, the orbit precesses in such a way that the acceleration or increase in atom velocity occurs when it is at apogee. The hydrogen atom decelerates when it is at perigee. Consequently, it would result in lowering of orbit apogee and raising its perigee. As the orbital plane aligns more and more with the Sun-Earth's direction, the rate of changes in apogee and perigee increases. By the end of this 10-day simulation, the orbital conditions become similar to those considered by us in the first example. Consequently, the atom would crash into the Earth's upper atmosphere in a couple more days. More video clips illustrating other effects of interest to space mission design and to spacecraft design can be found at the website astronauticsnow.com. Thank you for watching. I am Mike Grontman.